The Statue of Liberty, located in New York Harbor, stands as one of the most widely recognized symbols of democracy around the world. The statue was a gift from France to the United States, contingent upon the American nation taking responsibility for the design and cost of its foundation. It is ironic that one of the greatest symbols of freedom of all time stands changed to a pedestal of concrete and marble granite, which form its base. Welcome to Sergio's Structural Engineering Channel. Today, why does Lady Liberty remain changed to her pedestal? Artholi, the sculptor known for his colossal works, was the driving force behind the idea. Inspired by the Colossus of Rhodes, the statue was conceived as a symbol of liberty and democracy, with its torch illuminating the path of progress for society, the promise of a better future for a free humankind. The entire enterprise surrounding the project stands as a remarkable achievement in entrepreneurship, citizen participation, transatlantic cooperation, and first-class structural engineering. The project would have been different if Bartholdi had ultimately accepted the advice of Violet Leduc. The death of the great architect, whose memory will forever be linked to Notre Dame Cathedral, profoundly influenced the course of events, forcing Bartholdi to seek another structural consultant. This paved the way for the involvement of the great Gustav Eiffel in the project. The statue's heavy structure, originally conceived as a massive sand field core was replaced by a lattice framework shaped like a bridge pylon. Eiffel brought considerable expertise to the task, having previously demonstrated his mastery in the construction of the Garabit Viaduct. However, the entire structural design was the responsibility of the head of the technical office at Eiffel's company, the little known but outstanding Swiss engineer. Maurice Cochlin. Educated at ATH Zurich, Maurice was a disciple of Carl Kuhlmann, who not only taught him graphic statics, but also brought him a letter of recommendation that led to his employment by Gustav Eiffel. Without the silent work and unwavering dedication of Maurice Cochlin, Eiffel would not be recognized internationally as he is today. But let us continue with Lady Liberty, shall we? The scope of war related to the foundation, civil works, and pedestal could be designed by the Americans, architect Richard Morris Hunt, and civil engineer General Stone. Unfortunately, many relevant project documentation was lost during a fire in Paris in 1920s. Only during restoration works carried out between 1984 to 1986, many documents and drawings supposed to be lost so again, the sunlight. Besides the restoration activities requesting new representation techniques to complete the lack of original drawings, the first cut surveys and the structural models for Lady Liberty were performed during that time. Although corrosion was the major reparation to be addressed, new drawings and rediscovered documents show interesting aspects for the statue. For example, there was an structural incidence in the arm holding the torch. Bartholdi, once outside, decided by his own to change original structural design for the arm, which generated a structural issue to be solved during restoration activities. Among all those rediscovered blueprints, several foundation proposals designed by Heifel's uh, team were found. None of them were uh, built at the end. One of the purpose of this video is to understand how the structural engineers from the 19th century design a structure like the one that is represented in the blackboard. One of the most important actions that was considered during the design of the statue by the, the team of Eiffel was of course one of them, the, the vertical cell weight of the whole structure. That it was uh, 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 assumed to be or estimated uh, with 2000 kN. Uh, the, the, the total forces was 
was uh, located or was assumed to be located at the center of the gravity of the pylon. No? That represents the main, the main structure, uh, strength or resistance structure of the statue. Uh, the weight of the, the weight here that is represented is also taken into account not only the, the main structure but also the secondary and the envelope uh, that is formed by those Cooper pieces that conform uh, the, uh, the st Statue of Liberty. Even though it is true that there is a dedicated structural analysis uh, for the leg uh, that is considered as a cantilever connected to the main structure, it is true that in order to get the reaction at the base, uh, uh, at the base of the, of the main structure, it was not considered the eccentricity of the cell weight of this part of the of the statue. Due to the uh, the, the structure is, is is too light, no, so the heavy is not very heavy, okay. Uh, the, the action due to the wind over the external uh, surface of the structure, it is relevant in the design. No? I would like to also to show you how the uh, structural engineers in the 19th century uh, estimated the pressure of wind against any structure. Okay. Uh, the most important thing is that they use uh, 2.70 kilopascals okay, as a wind pressure. Uh, uh, in comparison with our nowadays code, you can see that the pressure was continuously or uniform from the from the very bottom to the to the top of the structure okay uh, what the people of Eiffel team uh, do it is to divide the, the statue in uh, several several areas where they dedicate it or they make it a calculation dedicated to specify exactly the surface area exposed to wind okay so uh, uh, until to get 21 areas okay so what they did uh, they multiply the area for each of these uh, little rectangles okay, per uh, wind pressure and then they get a horizontal force that is applied at the center of each uh, surface. Okay? So if we get uh, a summary for all of these areas, okay, we get a, a wind resultant equal to 272 kilonewtons that is located from the base of the structure uh, at, at a height equal to 17 so once we have uh, uh, estimated which is the resultant of forces due to wind loads against the statue, it is easier or it's trivial to get what is the bending moment uh, transmitted by the main structure against the foundation of the, of the whole, whole uh, statue. So it is so easy to multiply the arm, okay, the distance where the uh, wind forces resultant is located, directly by the orbital forces due to wind. So it is we get this value of bending moment acting against the foundation of the statue of Would you like to know how the, we are going to transfer the, the effort from the main structure to the foundation? It is necessary to give a section okay, that we call section A. You can, see, as you can see here in the blackboard we have the section AA okay, that is representing the, the, the cut of the main structure you know, at the, at the level of the, of the foundation. So, as you can see, the pylon, it is, it is uh, constituted by four legs. Uh, each of these legs is a L section, a transversal uh, section, okay? And the dimension between the edges of the structure is 3.8 and 4.9. That gives us a, a distance between the, this stream points, as is the diagonal, okay, of the rectangle of equal to 6.20 uh, meters, okay? So, if we want to get where, is, where we get the maximum compression and the tension, okay, due to the the weight of the or due to the force of the of the wind, okay, is we have to assume that the, our bending moment, okay, um, W is applied to an axis, okay, that is crossing or it is at the same location of the main diagonal, okay. So and then we are going to have here uh, the maximum compression, okay, in this point. That we are going to call A, okay, and the stream in the stream point that we are going to call B, we are going to get the maximum the maximum tension due to wind. As you can see here, we get the values due to axial and bending moment. First, we are going to uh, uh, estimate it what is the maximum compression force over this leg, okay? It's so easy that done to divide the axial forces and divide by four legs, okay, and add it, or we have to just make the summary for the uh, bending moment divided by the uh, length of the diagonal, okay? So we get this uh, 2,890 kilonewtons. For the uh, more uh, tension uh, length, okay, 
or the stress uh, intention, it is uh, the same, okay, but uh, the only thing is the compression forces, then we have to deduct the tension due to the uh, bending moment uh, for, for wind. Okay, so we get that the maximum tension forces for the leg transmitted to the foundation is uh, 1,890 km. So let's proceed to verify mooring systems. In accordance with available drawings, each leg is fixed to a girder system by three anchor bolts diameter 120 mm. In the original calculation, steel grade for anchor bolts was assumed to reach a tension limit equal to 60 MPa. In the hand calculations carried out on the screen, we calculated the required anchor bolt area to resist maximum tension. As a final result, provided area by anchor bolt diameter 120 mm is bigger than required area, so the solution it is acceptable. Calculations show also the necessary concrete volume required to balance maximum tension forces transmitted by each set of three anchor bolts. And now what will happen if we use uh, uh, the nowadays uh, design code that is actually used in North America uh, as AC722. Uh, we see that the pressure is quite different and of course what will be the bending moment and the horizontal resultant forces uh, uh, transmitted by the main structure to the foundation? An equivalent assessment has been carried out regarding wind loads, but this time using requirements established by American code AACE7. Assuming a wind velocity of 175 km per hour and a wind exposure type BD, the wind profile pressure has been defined from the bottom to the top of the statue. Actual design codes recognize that wind pressure intensity increases in accordance with height. KC factor, exposed factor, takes into account this fact. After wind study, we can conclude that if we Google design a statue of liberty nowadays, wind pressure will be only 70% bigger than the original wind value adopted 140 years ago. So differences regarding both wind loads calculations are minor in my opinion. But the question we posed at the beginning of this mini documentary remains an answer. Why is Lady Liberty changed to her pedestal? It is indeed contradictory that the ultimate symbol of freedom is not as free as Bartholdi might have envisioned over 130 years ago. Each of the four rafters of the pylon is anchored by three bolts metric 120 mm to a steel grillage of beams that support the statue. The tensile forces we calculated earlier are transmitted to the lower levels inside the concrete and granite pedestal through a system of struts, pin bolts and eye bars. These steel devices run along the inner walls of the pedestal, thereby avoiding interference with the space designated for pedestrian stair access. 60 feet below from the base of the statue, we find another metal frame made once again of riveted beams whose ends are embedded in the mansory that forms the pedestal. This embedding ensures that the maximum tensile forces transferred by the statue's main structure are contracted by the weight of the concrete and granite. As we saw earlier, we only need a volume equivalent to 75 cubic meters of concrete to balance out the 18900 kN tension force. On the other hand, democracy needs stability and balance. And that is precisely the case here. Without the change that tie the tower's structure to the massive pedestal, our beloved lady will topple under the lateral action of the wind. The lightness of the construction, 200 metric tons, is not, by itself, and not to keep the load center with the lattice main structure. It is the anchorage that prevents the whole assembly from becoming unstable. We are reaching to the end of the video for today. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, give a like or share the post with all those who could be interested in the structural engineering field. Take care and see you soon.